so much of this movement is is young. It's millennials, the largest generation in history, most diverse and progressive generation in history, approaching 40 years old with, you know, experienced everything uh, from wars to recessions uh, to the economic crisis of 2008 to 9-11. And you have the Zoomers who are now going to be experiencing um, this, this extraordinary circumstance with out the leader that they have seen mostly in their adult lives, which is Bernie Sanders, uh, take the lead in the movement. I think millennials like myself, uh, we, we, we lost uh, trust in the establishment, the democratic establishment, when uh, we saw Tim Geithner <laughs> brought in right after the economic collapse. And, and much of what we were facing was not dealt with uh, under the democratic administration. And so, I mean, where do we go from here? Where does this generation, who do they, they how do we organize? How do we defeat the establishment that flex their muscles so hard to defeat us? Well, look, a few weeks ago, you and I spoke of what would FDR do, right? And we spoke of that in hopes that Bernie Sanders was going to step forth and might actually, in light of the crisis, become the nominee, or at least that was the hope we might have shared. Look, we, we don't have an FDR today, obviously. We don't even have a Hoover, okay? Nor do we have the prospect of an FDR, okay? I mean, the least worst scenario is a Biden presidency. Did I say that right? The least worst least scenario? Worst scenario. Yep. Yeah. So well, sort of, yeah. But here's the thing. My, my work, everyone thinks that I'm the FDR scholar, which maybe I am. But I, but I wrote about FDR and what we call the greatest generation. And those folks were young, hmm. okay, in the, in the 30s. They were 15-year-olds and 20-year-olds, and they, and they, and they, they made... FDR great. Mm. And the thing is that they rallied and they mobilized. And I, you know, I'll start off in the silliest of ways, which I, I may have mentioned to you, I know I've said to a few people. I mean, if you look back at the 30s and it was miserable and hundreds of thousands of young people were on the road just because their parents couldn't even keep them. Yeah. And, for, and they were lucky enough to have a president who was willing to mobilize their energies and, and, and all that. But it's also the case that there's a lot of energy amongst young people. And, and, and I don't, look, this crisis has yet to be figured out fully, but part of the figuring out is, is made a little bit easier because we have all of this social media. I mean, folks who are in their 20s and their 30s or even their teens have to realize that they're empowered in a way that other generations were not. And so, for example, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I, I think I was telling you before, you know, young people, I, I do all these, I do podcasts and radio and all that. And I'm a good, I have to be a good 30 years older than every, every one of the people that, I, that I'm dealing with. And I'm always impressed. Look, I mean, I, I'm concerned about whether or not we all can get our act together, whatever our ages, but I'm really impressed by the energy that, that exists. So, and by the way, and there's this multi-tiered kind of sort of, and I don't even want to call it alternative. I want to call it new media. So I do a radio show with a community group in New Orleans or a podcast with a group that calls itself Highlands Bunker in Baltimore. I mean, so all across the country, there are these things. Yeah. As well as folks like you. I mean, you have a good reputation. You're going to have a, you're, you're going to, your following is going to grow. Um, Michael Brooks, who's, who's a dear friend and his show is just literally exploding, you might say. And majority report seems to be, you know, really thriving. Um, not to mention, we've got, the, we've got rising in the morning, okay? We've got majority report midday, which I've come to really be, make my midday scene, and then the Young Turks. And I know when I say that, everybody has their favorites, and they'll scorn any one of those. But yeah. let's face it, I mean, there is this really thriving alternative media. I, I didn't even want to say alternative, but new media. Mm -hmm. Now, that on the same scale as cable news, well, nobody, nobody watching cable news anyhow. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an addiction. That's it's right. not really, it's not really something people do to learn very much, or at least I can't imagine they do. Um, the mainstream media, I don't even know if it exists any longer, what we think of as mainstream media. So the thing is, we're really well positioned. I say we, cause I'm not young, but we're really well positioned to create something. But the question is, can we create it in a way so that it doesn't become because we cannot afford fragmentation right now. We can't afford splintering. We can't afford arguing over terminologies, okay? Even though I have my, my preferred terminology, we can't afford to argue over that. 
we have to realize that we are at this moment, you know, just back in the 30s, Harry Hopkins said, we can't waste a crisis. And I hate to quote, uh, what's his name? Who was Rob Emanuel, who stole yeah, it. He yeah. said, we can't waste a crisis, but he wasted everything, basically. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, we can't waste this crisis. And, and it is important that we create some kind of united left or popular front left. And in doing so, we should also th try to imagine the ways of using media. You know, I'll tell you something very interesting. I have no idea what will come of it. So I was on Rising last, last week, or was, maybe it was even this week. I'm, everything's running together. And I happened to mention the idea, that, or maybe I mentioned it to you as well, that we have to think in terms of putting on a show, Yeah. perhaps. And somebody con heard me say that, and they contacted me from California today, somebody whose husband was for a while a co-director of Second City in Chicago, and said, let's talk about what the possibilities are. So it strikes me that there, right in this moment, there are possibilities. And whether or not we can pull it off will hang on your generation's sort of energies and creativities and your willingness to reach out, basically, and, and, and pull people in. So I don't know if I'm being clear about that, but that to me, it, that to me is what this moment is about. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can support The Nomi Key Show on YouTube by clicking subscribe, like, and sharing. Because as you guys know, now more than ever, we have to support our independent media. Uh, we are being attacked from every angle and everyone's watching CNN every night. So it's important that we take care of the good guys fighting the fight. You can also join us on Patreon for special content and interviews. Uh, we also have swag like these new mugs starting as low as $5 a month, which is you know basically what an iced coffee is in Manhattan when we had iced coffee shops open. You can go to patreon.com slash the Nomi Key Show.